Diet is one of the main things that affects our health and well-being, not only today, but into the future. So one of the reasons we talk about nutrition, we're so interested in nutrition, is because we want to promote body health now, but we also want to make sure that we don't increase the risk of health-related problems in the future because of our diet. And there are a number of diseases whose risk increases when we do not consume a healthy diet. And actually, if you look at the leading causes of death here in Canada, Canada, the majority of these leading causes of death, quite a number of these, are related to poor nutrition. So we're actually going to study all four of these things in this, in this textbook, not in this chapter, but we're going to talk about how certain dietary factors increase our risk of these various chronic diseases. And to save you the suspense, <laughs> eating too much and eating too much, over-consuming certain nutrients is the main thing that puts us at risk of these various chronic diseases. Diet is so important to our overall, overall health. The interesting thing is, is that diet doesn't affect us all the same way. Our genetics can influence how certain nutrients are absorbed, their availability in the body, how our body reacts to them. There is a big interaction between diet and genetics in uh, de determining our risk for, for health effects or negative health effects uh, now and in the future. What's also very interesting is that in addition to genetics affecting how our body uses the nutrients, nutrients and our diet can affect the expression of our genes. So when I say the expression of our genes, I don't mean that our genetic code, our DNA changes. But there are certain factors associated with our DNA code, for instance, how tightly wrapped up our DNA is, or whether there are these little tags called methyl groups on our, on our DNA. These are different things called epigenetic changes that affect whether that DNA code is actually going to be coded or transcribed, as we might say, into something called a functional protein. Okay, so like I just said, what's interesting is that diet can affect that. Diet can affect these different like markers, these different tags, these different statuses of our DNA that affects whether it's actually going to be expressed or not. So to give us a little bit more of a practical understanding, uh, I love this example here, and it shows how by changing the diet of a mother, in particular mother mice, we can actually affect what her offspring looks like. So here we have what we call uh, an agouti mouse, a pregnant agouti mouse. Um, and these agouti, agouti mice, what they have is they have a mutation that's associated with their, with their appetite regulation. And these agouti mice tend to be yellow, that's supposed to be yellow, <laughs> and they tend to be obese as well. Now, what's interesting is if you feed that mother just like a regular mouse diet, her child is going to end up exactly the same way. It's going to end up like the mother, yellow and obese. However, if you feed that yellow agouti mouse a diet that's high in something called methyl groups, and don't worry too much about what those are, but basically if we modify the diet of the mother, look how different the offspring turns out. The offspring turns out brown, and the offspring turns out uh, not being obese, to be leaner. All we did was change the diet of the mother. Everything else was the same, including the DNA of the offspring. But how the DNA was expressed, that changes. And that's an example of how our diet can affect gene expression, a concept called nutritional epigenetics. A human example of this, a natural experiment that is quite unfortunate actually, uh, occurred during the Dutch famine during the Second World War. So during the Second World War, uh, Germany shut off all supplies to, to Holland and a lot of mothers, a lot of people in general, had no food. They were surviving on like 500 calories a day in some cases on a very poorly diverse and undiverse, unvaried diet. And what's interesting is if you look at children born around the Dutch famine compared to their siblings, so they would have very similar genetics, 
children versus their siblings. They're similar genetics. It's not going to be the same, but it's going to be similar. And they would also have similar environments too, because after the Second World War, all those rations were lifted and people had access to food again. Okay, so the only thing that differed between these siblings is whether the mother was basically in a famine during pregnancy. And what they found is that children that were born during the Dutch famine had a higher risk of schizophrenia, higher risk of, of depression, higher risk of cardiovascular disease. And we believe that has to do with the dietary changes that affected gene expression. And in fact, they have studied these, these offspring that were born to, in and around the Dutch famine, and they found changes to some of these epigenetic markers, in particular, um, the, the how many methyl groups they had around their DNA. So just another example of how diet can affect not our DNA code, but how our genes are expressed. And what's interesting about this is that it seems to be c carried down through generations as well. And that's why what we eat not only affects our health, but may also affect the health of other generations as well.